So for today's print project, we're going to be working on this oldie that I've had here, hanging out here for a while. The way we're going to be printing this is every th the white under base uh, will be high solid acrylics. We're going to be doing a print, flash, and a print. And then the overprint colors will be Plastisol, which is green and red. The first thing we're going to tackle is figuring out what the settings are on the artboard. So you want to be in RGB mode when it comes to separating in Photoshop. Another thing that I've heard, I've heard mixed results on this is that you're going to get your image size up to like around 900 pixels per inch. Now this thing is already really wide, 16 by 20, but we're going to take it up to 900 just for because. So you come over into image, you come to image size, and it opens this dialog box. You change your resolution to 900, and then you hit OK. Let's tackle the underbase first. So you come over here to the thing, and you're going to select a magic wand tool. Usually tolerance around 50 is fine. As far as anti-aliasing, I don't know if you should have this checked on or off. I, I don't know that there's much of a difference, but anti-aliasing ultimately just smooths the transition from um, one color edge to another. So I'm going to go ahead and keep it on. If you have any information as to whether or not you should or should not use it when separating in Photoshop let me know in the comments now the next setting here is a uh, contiguous and what this allows you to do is if it's unchecked and you click on the artboard anywhere oh man it runs really slow at 900 pixels per inch god damn it will select all of the color within the artboard now if you turn it on or if you check it dude this is gonna be the worst because my computer I can't a key Ugh. so if you turn it on then you can see that it only selects the color within this range. If the color is not touching that the same color somewhere else, it will just isolate to that. It just gives you a little bit more control about what you are selecting. So I'm going to turn contiguous off, and we're going to start with my white under base. And to do that, I'm going to use the magic wand tool first. And I'm going to start by selecting the white. Contiguous is turned off, so it's going to select all the white in the graphic. Now this first selection would be what you consider a highlight white if you were doing Plastisol. But because we're not doing Plastisol, we're doing a water-based white. I'm going to combine the highlight white with the under base under the other print colors, making one screen with a full white plate. So I've selected all the highlight white here. I come over to this hamburger up here in the top right on the channels tab. Channel tab is open. Hamburger, open it, and I'm going to go new spot channel. From there, I'm going to name this under base. And uh, you can select whatever color you want to. I tend to go just with like maybe a really light blue, something slightly off of white, just so that I can tell that it's not the artboard in the background. So there's my under base white. Now, if I turn these, these RGB colors off, you'll see that it's assigned this dense black to the selection. Uh, but when that's turned on, and if you do this, and to create the shirt color, you just come down here. Uh, and you're going to go new channel, which is this little paper folded thing. Click new channel, and it'll create this new thing here. You just double click it, come over here, make it a spot color, select whatever color your shirt would be, uh, and then hit OK, and then you can rename it or whatever. That's what I just did. But for now, I'm going to turn this off. You can see when the shirt color is turned on, RGBs are turned off. You turn those off with the eyeballs here. Uh, then it actually shows what my, my assigned print color is going to be. We want the red to have the same white color underneath it. Right now it's knocked out. But you can see here, this red, when you print it by itself, it would be fairly dark. It would turn to burgundy on a black shirt. So we want to put white underneath it. Uh, the way that I'm going to go about doing this, well, first off, make sure that you've unchecked your under base and that you've selected your RGB channels. So all of these colors are on. You go to Select, Color Range. And I'm going to use the eyedropper tool and click in the red. And then from there, you can use this slider. I'm going to keep the slider all the way at 200 because I want to get every single pixel that has red in it in this image selected. And now that it's selected everything, you can see the little marching ants around all the red areas. I'm going to come over to the hamburger, new spot channel. We're going to call this, uh, it's actually gray even though it's red. This is the gray shadow. And I'm going to come into color here, and I'm just going to take this to a nice... Uh, medium gray okay now let's turn the RGB off let's turn our shirt color on you can see the gray there let's turn our white on and you can see that there is gray there right but what we want to do is combine this gray also with the under base but this is going to need to have the white choke down underneath it so I've, I've created my, my gray channel there, but I'm going to come back in here. And this time, uh, hang on, I 
Actually, I'm going to turn contiguous on, and then I'm going to select just this red in this squeegee here, and let's see if there's anything else that uh, um, maybe is overlapping somewhere. Uh, technically, that is, but I'm just going to leave that alone. Maybe I'll draw that out a little bit later. Okay, so that's good to go. Now, the way I'm going to create this channel, and I'm going to combine it with the underbase, I'm going to go up here to select. I'm going to go modify. I'm going to go contract. And I'm going to contract this by, let's just go ahead and uh, five pixels. And I'm sure that there's other ways to go about uh, contract constricting these things, but this is the way that I know how to do it, so that's the way I'm going to do it. If you have another way, let me know. Go to the hamburger, new spot channel, bada bink, bada boom. So what I'm ultimately doing is just creating a scenario where I can start combining stuff. So right now we have this gray shadow. Let me turn this off. Turn our t-shirt color on. We have our white underbase. Now this is just the squeegee, right? But you turn this on, and we also have the squeegee and the hands. So what I'm going to do first is I'm going to combine this channel by hitting, holding control and clicking, and that creates the selection here. Then I'm going to highlight the underbase here. I'm going to use this bucket. I'm going to click the fill bucket, and then I'm going to click inside the selection. So now I have I have a choked white base underneath this, and if I put the gray over it, yeah. Uh, but yeah, so you zoom in there. There's just a little bit of a choke, so this is kind of wrapping around that. So that'll work pretty good for me. Now I'm going to turn this colorway off, and I'm just going to come in here and manually erase this squeegee. So I'm going to highlight the gray shadow, come on in here, I'm going to expand this up a little bit, and I'm just going to get my butt to erasing. I'm not compl I'm not a hundred. I'm not afraid of uh, I, was, I just said a lot there without saying anything. I'm not afraid to sometimes just dive in and use my eraser tool. You know what I mean? Takes a few seconds. It's not painful at all, and it just gets you, gives you a little bit. If you're willing to go this route, you have ultimate control over what it is that you're separating. And I think at the end of the day, that's the most important thing. All right, so let's turn our underbase back on. And now that I've removed. I'm going to turn it back off one more time. I removed the squeegee from this base, so I'm going to hold control. I'm going to select this, and now I'm going to come back to this underbase, and I'm going to, uh, I'm going to go fill this. So it'll take a million years. Now if I unselect it, you're going to see. Actually, that turned out pretty good. Sometimes you'll see little spaces between it, and then that's not any good. But in this case, it worked out just fine. So now I'm pretty confident with this underbase here, man. Like Everything that's going to be printing in gray also has white underneath it. So it's gonna it's gonna uh, be printing on top of our print flash print. So that's this is the way that I want it to go. Uh, the next and final step is pretty straightforward. We just gotta isolate that green. I can also delete this gray shadow here. Now the the trick is here is that with the green, every pretty much everything in this graphic that is showing green, we're gonna need the underbase below that to choke about you know five pixels as well. Uh, so let's go back to using the magic wand. I'm going to use the magic wand. I'm going to con turn contiguous off, and I'm going to select all of the green in the graphic. It takes forever because my computer is slow as shit. I have all the green in the graphic. I'm going to um, turn RGB off. I'm going to turn the shirt color on. I'm going to turn my underbase on. What we want to do is add this this print, this green selection to the underbase, right? But we want it choked. So the way to do that is, uh, this is the way I know how to do it. I'm sure there's other ways. I'm going to go to modify. I'm going to go to contract, and I'm going to contract it five pixels. Okay. Now that I've done that, I'm going to select the underbase, use my little my paint bucket, and what happens? See the paint bucket is filled with black, and I click uh, fill. Just click inside the marching ants, and there we go. Now we have the green choked down. Now hopefully this isn't too confusing to you guys. I feel like. I hope I'm explaining it clearly enough. And this may be a little bit ass backwards from the way other shops might do it, but this is the way I'm separating a spot graphic in Photoshop. Now, a few things have happened here. Because I did it that way, we have this right here, which, you know, there's other ways to battle that depending on the situation. And we also have this down here, which I'm really not happy about. But before we tackle that, I'm going to apply my green overprint. So I'm going to select the green one more time. Again, that first green selection was so that we could apply it, so that we could choke it and then apply it to our underbase. Now we've selected all the green in the thing. We're going to go over here to the hamburger, new spot color. Uh, we're going to call this neon green. Neon green. Sit down. Neon green. We're going to fill that bad boy with some neon green. 
Bada bink, bada boom, bada sha boom. Now if we turn RGB off, we got this, this, and this. So this is more or less how it's gonna finally print. There are some issues which I'm just not happy with. Some sometimes you might go ahead and just say, hey, F it. But I'm not gonna say F it. We're gonna we're gonna fix this. So with the underbase here, I'm gonna turn these two colors off. You can see that there's an outline. I'm just gonna grab my little brush tool, make sure it's filled with black, and I'm just gonna fill this in. That's a pretty good underbase. That's a pretty good gray, and then that's a pretty good green overprint. I'm happy with this. It's not ideal, and I'm concerned that I didn't quite choke it enough, but hey. You're going to delete these, these channels. So you're going to delete your RGBs. Done that. You can also delete your shirt color. You don't need it no more. And if you want to, you can hit Control Shift, Control, and then he'll hold Shift and select the rest of the image. You know, like if you want to really crop this down to the whatever, just do all that. And then you're going to come up to Image, hit Crop, and it'll crop it to the closest bit of information in the thing. You know what it looks like? There might be something uh, funky on this underbase here. it seemed to there it goes uh save as again we're gonna go photoshop dcs 2.0 eps hit save and then you're gonna do a you're gonna select the drop down you're gonna go to single file color composite hit okay so now that that's done i'm gonna go into my uh, screen print assets this is just my registration artboard where i'm gonna place my eps file Oh, good enough, dude. Okay, so we're going to go File. I'm going to come over here to where it says Place. Control-Shift-P if you want to. And we're looking for Splatters EPS. So I'm going to take that bad boy. I'm going to hit Place. Watching grass grow. Oh. Uh oh. Yeah. All right. And I'm going to place it. Now I'm going to take this thing down in size a bit. Uh, this is another reason I like Illustrator, because you can tell like what the print width is from right up here. Uh, this is actually a different file, man. What the hell is this one? All right. Anyway, I'm going to center it up between the glasses here. Bada bing, bada boom. And then save it. And I'm going to go out to the computer, and we'll print the film. So we hit save. <clears throat> and there we go. Control-P, uh, General, hit Custom, and then we're going to make sure that where it's, it normally will be composite, we're going to go to Separations, hey, shut the thing up, and we're going to print our gray, green, and our underbase white. Gray, green, and underbase white, hit Print. ourselves three films that's our white underbase that is the green and that one over there is the gray